Archaeology confirms the Exodus Red Sea Crossing. Evidence for the Exodus, Red Sea Crossing, and Mount Sinai confirms the biblical narrative. The Exodus, the Red Sea Crossing, and the journey to Mount Sinai are some of the most significant events in the Bible. Recent archaeological and geographical evidence increasingly supports the biblical account, confirming that these events took place in ways that align with both Scripture and history. Here, we will explore this evidence and address the key components of the Exodus narrative, focusing on the Red Sea crossing. Let's orient ourselves on a map of Egypt and its surroundings. Moving from left to right on the map, we have Egypt followed by the Gulf of Suez, followed by the V-shaped Sinai Peninsula, followed by the Gulf of Aqaba, followed by modern-day Saudi Arabia, called Midians in the Bible. One view has been that the Israelites crossed through the Gulf of Suez from Egypt into the Sinai Peninsula. In the Gulf of Suez, the underwater seafloor is even, and there are gentle slopes down to the bottom of the seafloor and up to the other side. An alternate view is that the Israelites crossed through the Gulf of Aqaba from the Sinai Peninsula to Midian, modern Saudi Arabia, to the east. In this video, we discuss the evidence for the second view above. Based on this view, the path of the Exodus is as follows. The Israelite slaves left Egypt, traveled east, to the right on the map, over the northern top of the Gulf of Suez into the Sinai Peninsula. Then, they moved south and east, to the right it and down on the map, across the Sinai Peninsula, and came to the shore of the Gulf of Aqaba. That is where the Exodus Red Sea crossing took place. They crossed from the Sinai Peninsula across the miraculously cleared floor of the Gulf of Aqaba and into the land of Midian, modern Saudi Arabia. In this video, we will discuss the evidence for this crossing. New Evidence In recent decades, a growing number of researchers proposed that the Red Sea crossing occurred at the Aqaba finger of the Red Sea, specifically at a location known as Nueva Beach. This site, about 40 miles south of Eilat, Israel, offers the best setting for the miraculous crossing described in the Bible. The Israelites' journey and crossing. The Bible states that a large group of Israelite men, women, and children left Egypt, Exodus 12, 37. These people were pursued by some or all of the Egyptian army, which consisted of 600 chariots and up to 50,000 horsemen and 200,000 footmen, according to historical sources like Josephus. The view that the Israelites crossed at Nueva Beach at the edge of the Gulf of Aqaba, aligns well with the biblical narrative. After leaving Egypt, they traveled a considerable distance through the wilderness before reaching the Red Sea, Exodus 13, 18 to 22. This journey would have taken several days. Nuaiba Beach, located at a considerable distance, fits the description of the Israelites' extended travel through a wilderness before reaching the sea. The path to the beach is along a valley with a dry riverbed, Wadi Watir, that is hemmed in by mountains. There is one large entrance to the beach, which would have enabled the Egyptian army to lock the Israelites in. And the beach is large enough for thousands of Israelites to camp there. All of these fit the biblical narrative. Descriptions from the Jewish historian Josephus and Exodus indicate that mountains surrounded the Israelites on three sides, north, south, and west. The mountains ended right near the water's edge, on the north and south sides of the beach, and the only path and escape route was the wadi, dry riverbed the Israelites traveled through to the shore. These descriptions fit the Nueva Beach location. At Nueva Beach, the ocean floor offers a unique feature, an underwater slope leading down from the Sinai side and a slope up to the opposite shore in Saudi Arabia. Just north and south of this area, the ocean floor is marked by deep ravines making Nueva the most likely location for such a crossing. The maximum depth of this crossing point is about 850 meters, consistent with the biblical description of the Israelites walking between walls of water, Exodus 14, verse 22, that were held apart by God. Slope analysis. Could the Israelites walk down the Sinai near side slope in the Gulf of Aqaba Valley and then up the far side slope of the Aqaba Valley to Saudi Arabia after God parted the waters? To answer this question, we measured depths and distances at the crossing site from an underwater bathymetric depth map of the Gulf of Aqaba from the Ministry of Energy and Infrastructure, Geological Survey of Israel, 
Based on the depth contour map, the deepest part of the Aqaba Valley, underwater, is 850 meters. The crossing width is 17 kilometers. At the crossing site, the distance from the Sinai side shore to the deepest Aqaba Valley bottom is 9 kilometers to the 850 meter depth. This gives us an average downward slope of less than 6 degrees. At the crossing site, the distance from the deepest Aqaba Valley bottom location with 850 meter depth to the Saudi Arabian shore is 6.5 kilometers. This gives us an average upward slope of 8 degrees. These are very low slopes, so there should be no problem for the Israelites to walk down the 6 degree slope and up the 8 degree slope to cross the Gulf of Aqaba at the crossing site once God held back the waters. If there were any locally steeper spots, the Israelites could zigzag diagonally to lower the effective slope or go around such spots. So, there would have been no problem for the Israelites to walk across the gulf at the crossing location. How about the distance? A normal person can walk 5 kilometers per hour. Going down a 6-degree slope would speed up their walk. Going up a 8-degree slope would slow them down a bit. Including these effects, it would take about 1.5 hours to walk down the slope at 6.5 kilometers per hour due to the down slope and two and a half hours to walk up the other side at three kilometers per hour due to the upward slope and half an hour to walk along the roughly flat bottom of the valley at five kilometers per hour. This means that a normal adult could walk across the entire Aqaba Valley in 4.5 hour. A normal adult can walk five kilometers an hour. In comparison, a 10 year old child can walk four kilometers an hour. A healthy 60 year old adult can walk four and a half kilometers an hour. A healthy 70-year-old adult can walk 4 kilometers an hour, and a not as healthy 70-year adult can walk 3 kilometers an hour. Based on these numbers, a healthy adult could cross the Aqaba Valley in 4.5 hours, and a 10-year-old child or a healthy 60 to 70-year-old adult could cross in 5.5 hours, and a not as healthy 70-year-old adult could cross in 7.5 hours. With 1.5 to 2.5 hours of periodic breaks to rest, that means that the Israelite population could cross the valley in 6 to 10 hours, that is, within a single night or day. Archaeological Findings Evidence of the Crossing One piece of evidence supporting the Nueva Beach Crossing is independent reports of unusual coral formations resembling coral-encrusted chariot wheels and other artifacts on the ocean floor. These objects have been found on the Egyptian side of the Gulf of Aqaba, consistent with the view that chariots were indeed lost in the sea, just as the Bible records, Exodus 14, 23-28. The sandy nature of the seabed in this area would not support coral growth. However, corals can seed upon and encrust solid objects such as wheels. This would be consistent with the coral-encrusted objects seen underwater. In addition, a large pillar has been reported at the site of the Red Sea crossing, attributed to King Solomon. This is consistent with the ancient practice of setting up commemorative pillars indicating a significant event there. The location of Mount Sinai. Following the crossing, the Israelites traveled to Mount Sinai, where they received the Ten Commandments. Mount Sinai is described as being located in Midian, and Saudi Arabia is the historical region that corresponds to Midian. Evidence supporting this identification includes the discovery of ancient altars, inscriptions, and a large split rock that is consistent with the site where Moses struck the rock and water flowed out for the Israelites, Exodus 17, verse 6. Additionally, the mountainous terrain of the region matches the biblical description of the Israelites being hemmed in by the wilderness before crossing the Red Sea, Exodus 14, verses 1 to 3. The meaning of Yam Suf. The term Yam Suf is used in the Bible to describe locations around the Aqaba finger of the Red Sea, as seen in 1 Kings 926, where Solomon's fleet was stationed at Asian Geber near modern-day Eilat. This suggests that the Red Sea referred to in the Exodus account is indeed the Gulf of Aqaba, rather than the shallow marshes near Egypt. Conclusion Confirming the Exodus In light of the archaeological discoveries and geographical evidence, the biblical account of the Exodus, the Red Sea crossing, and the journey to Mount Sinai is increasingly supported by modern research. The evidence from Nueva Beach, including coral-encrusted circular wheel-like structures, the unique topography of the ocean floor, and the pillar reportedly erected by Solomon, 
provides strong evidence for the historical reality of this event. In addition, the identification of Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia fits well with the biblical narrative. The Exodus was not just a miraculous event, but a defining moment for the Israelites, demonstrating God's power and faithfulness to His people. The growing body of evidence helps affirm the authenticity of this extraordinary narrative, offering a compelling case for its historical veracity. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And comment below if you agree or would like to add your thoughts. Thanks to Google Earth for images and to the Geological Survey of Israel Bathymetric Map for depths and distances.